welcome to this video which is in collaboration with Lindsay from Mama Schmooze Reviews and several others are doing this tag with us. Below will be links to the playlist where you can check out Tanya from Project Happy Home, Heidi from Boy Boss Mama, Abby from Full Time Wife Life, Rachel from Day to Day Joys, Michelle from A Common Life. See if I got that. Oh my goodness. And then you're watching me so go ahead and click that link down below. It's going to have everything. So this is the preschool homeschool tag and in this video we're going to be answering some questions what we're going to be doing with our preschool. I have a Charlotte Mason atmosphere so preschool years are more not focusing on the workbook learning as much as taking them outside so this is going to be interesting. Uh, go ahead and stick around. Let's see at the end who I decided to tag in this homeschool video. All right, let's get started. So the first question that is asked is, what is your preschooler's favorite picture, book, or books? Whew. Well, um, let me just say that my children have decided to completely tear apart every shelf in my home to make a library in the boys' room. I'm not kidding. Mm. Yeah, see? Mm. So trying to find the children's favorite was turning out to be more hassle than it's worth. And, ooh, yeah, well, I know which one have always been my children's favorite, and those are the Eloise Wilkin books. And I actually have a treasury that I was trying to find for this video, and I can't find it. She is well known for the Golden, um, the Golden Book series, so We Help Mommy, We Love Daddy, or We Help Daddy and several others. These ones I was able to find. This one tends to be everybody's favorite. Um, they have this memorized, you know, by the third or fourth night that we've read this. And then we have little prayers for a small child. Again, they have always been favorites. Throughout the years, all the children have had their favorite books, so there's not one I could specifically tell you. One of the things that I have fostered is that books are always at their fingertips. And it's not just children's books. My preschoolers are not above picking up a Harry Potter size of book, opening up and reading. So it's it's always like, oh, I really liked this part of the story. What did you think about this part? And they'll just jump in the conversation as if they're part of it. And that's kind of how I've done it. Of course, there's always books that I can be telling you about and putting you here but that's gonna be really hard to narrow it down so definitely Eloise, Eloise Wilkin books um, stuff at the library is always open um, some of our favorites over the years have been Drummer Hoff and we're going on a bear hunt something that has like a rhyme and catch to it kids definitely love and then of course we have our picture book of Bible stories that always um, excites children for the most part. Keeping it real, we are sinners here. Okay, question number two. How do you teach them ABCs, colors, shapes, and numbers? Show hands on tablets, books, etc. You know, when I started off doing things by the book, so to speak, we did have a chart, we did have the colors, and I did have things, okay, color this red, this is the color red. But it quickly was set aside. Honestly, the best thing that I have ever done was just to make it everyday part of life. I would always say, we're gonna put our blue shirt on today. Look at me, I'm wearing a green shirt and you're wearing a green shirt too. John, can you go pick up five toys and put them away for me? Um, even so much as shapes, we never really learned shapes. It was just, oh, square, circle, triangle. Those are so simple. And a lot of times the toys are like that. Or when, when I'm teaching them to draw a star, because they want to draw stars, those are always children's fun things. I'll be like, okay, we're going to take two triangles and make a David star. It's always been a natural, not sitting down learning uh, shapes, numbers, alphabet, etc. Even the alphabet. That one, we always have the ABC song that you learn in the car as you're traveling along. But the connection that they make is usually when I'm telling them to write out their name and mom's name and they want to write a letter to somebody 
And so I'm teaching them the letters as they go along. We're going to make a D this time. And it's just built up from there. It's always been a natural learning environment. And that's been the best way. I have tried the other way. I did that with my first two. And it wasn't natural. And therefore, I don't think it was retained as well until it became more like this. So that's really how I did it. And so far as shapes, there's definitely some shapes that we still don't know, but it comes up later. So if my kid enters first grade and doesn't know every single shape, I'm okay with it. Sometimes you learn really quickly between the octagon and the hexagon just by living out your life. So there you go. Question number three. Do you use a curriculum for your preschooler? No. But yes. But no. Um, again, I follow a, a Charlotte Mason method. It is a method, not a curriculum, as constantly pushed out by um, the leading authorities in that. The method is, is that this is a lifetime learning process. It isn't just moving from curriculum to curriculum or stage to stage, so to speak. I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry. I'm losing my voice. I just got like this really nasty cold within the last couple days. But a Charlotte Mason method basically says let the children learn just by their day-to-day -day lives. Children constantly ask questions and those questions you're going to be answering constantly. Take them outside. This is a great time for them to just enjoy the bugs and the, the plants and everything that is out there. Their world is so small and everything is so much and they're just asking questions. You don't necessarily need a curriculum to do that. Um, I do print off things for them to color. They love to do that or sometimes they'll just make their own. They like to make books. So that's kind of my curriculum. Um, sometimes I'll do dot to dot for the letter progression or the number progression but that's not anything other than let's just have a little bit of fun with this and make things mix things up a little bit um they are listening as i'm teaching the older ones so they are gathering all this information in and if this is your first child then you're just learning along with them they're painting with you they are hearing what you're listening to so that's kind of a little hmm Keep your eye out for that one. And this time is really about you guys learning together and making that learning environment um, inviting. What are your favorite websites for teaching pre-K? Um, probably just going on AmplifiedOnline.com and looking at the Year Zero book suggestion list. Um, I also have my own kind of things that I just know about and learn about and we do that together. A lot of times there's activities at the library, you can go and do that. Once a month, Home Depot has their little kid activity and we go and do that. So, and just going out and walking around is perfectly delightful. Do you take your preschooler to any community activities on a weekly basis? Weekly? No. Except if you if you want to say the park and, and the library, I do that. But um, it's more just kind of the environment and learning and we just go and we do it just for fun. How long approximately do you teach a preschooler each day? Probably mm, about 24 hours a day. I'm teaching them to sleep, I'm teaching them to eat, I'm teaching them table manners. It doesn't end. And when I say I teach them to sleep, I really am because I have to keep telling my preschooler, get in bed and stay there. You don't need a drink of water. It's going to mean that you're going to keep getting up because then you're going to have to go to the bathroom and wash your hands when you're done with the bathroom. It really is like a 24 hour day when you're teaching. Going outside. As much as sit down activity, we do a lot of read alouds. And so, I, if you want to include that, there's probably between mm, one to two hours of reading that we do every day. And that is a great, um, I, I found that a little bit longer, you kind of start dulling reading and a little bit. Um, less you just don't get a good groove going. What is their favorite educational shows to watch? Right now they're watching The Waltons. Family Values. I don't have television and I'm not saying that I don't have TV. I don't have a television set so if we watch something it's on our laptop. 
And if you can imagine, all five of us, I have five kids, ages 10, I guess I should have said that, ages 10, 9, 6, almost 5, and almost 2. They're on a couch. And if somebody's way over here, they can't see, and if somebody's way over this far, they can't see. So it's kind of like this. You've got this range. And so that kind of means we don't watch a whole lot. They enjoy watching the Clean With Me videos and the organizing videos and, you know, the YouTube ones and the Waltons. Let's see, what else have we watched? We watch Andy Griffith. Those are our educate. Oh, um, All Creatures Great and Small, which are the James Harriet shows that was made back in the 80s, I think. Those are the kinds of things. It's just, again, a natural learning environment. So I do like those things. How do you occupy your little ones while homeschooling your older kids? Well, sometimes they're running up and down the hall screaming and yelling and I'm going like this while I'm trying to help with the uh, older ones. Sometimes I'm like, go get a game of Uno and go play over there. And by the way, Uno is a great educational game. Dude, they're going to learn number sequentials pretty quickly. They're going to learn their colors pretty quickly. Um, speed is another one. Liar is another one. Um, dude, you don't, you, you don't need a program. It's just a couple card, card games. Um, but those we've done. I've got coloring books. I have workbooks for them. And I, they're just coloring books with numbers and letters on them. But I don't check them and I don't teach them. They just have their quiet time with them. They do also a lot of copy work because I don't, maybe it's just my kids. My kids love copy work. They love to copy out sentences and everything. What is your favorite? What is your favorite educational toy to use for teaching? There is a lot that I do enjoy, and books definitely are my one. You are gonna want to check out the following video or the follow-up video that we're going to have on this, which is our favorite resources for teaching preschoolers. Um, I don't necessarily have anything to show you, but stay tuned because I will pull all this together. But really, it's those games. It's that quality time that you're just putting into your kid. It's the books that we're reading. It's the memories we're making as a family. It's the time that we put together with those cookie making. Do I have one specific resource? Mm -mm. They're all favorites and they all capture my heart and just make me realize the importance of taking time to be a mom to my kids. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and check out the link down below. If you are more of a hands-on tactile person, I am sure many of those ladies are going to be so fabulous with what they can share. Again, I think I'm more of a laid-back kind of mom, so if that's your personality, I hope this video was great for you, so give me a thumbs up. Check the link down below for everybody else, and until next time, have a great day. Farewell. Bye.